thank you very much for this invitation uh, to the Global Health Information Force uh, Speaker Series. I'm very honored. Uh, my name is Audrey Masizana. I'm with uh, Dr. Gray Fokonberry, and I will I will explain a few things as we go along. And I'm glad that we are responding to a call that says, what does a global health informatics collaboration look like? Because um, we are currently uh, engaging on um, a global health informatics, program, which is a collaboration between the University of Botswana, Department of Computer Science, and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Next slide. Um, I'll just talk about a, a project uh, overview and then Gray will give you a bit of history and then what is happening so far. Then I'll come in with the challenges and um, and the way forward. So the project is, and is entitled Evaluating Healthcare Data Collection, um, Sharing and Use in Botswana. And uh, we found it very uh, appropriate to brand it in a, in, a, in a local language that means sharing um, just so that uh, it connects with the people here. Uh, we call it Kamuhano. Uh, Kamuhano is the word that means sharing. And it's an intervention of technology and healthcare, which is what um, really uh, health informatics represents. And as I said before, uh, it's a collaboration between the University of Botswana and Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Next slide. So. Well, the partners are the Department of Computer Science. So in, in 2012, uh, prior to that, we had a, uh, a a relationship with Microsoft USA where we had a project and um, it didn't quite go well in terms of implementation, but it produced loads and loads of, 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 of research outputs, more than 20 papers. But we are not happy with the fact that when it came to um, uh, implementation, it didn't quite go well um, because we had not prepared uh, good collaborations um, with the Ministry of Health, especially, and so forth. So we decided to establish uh, this unit, which will make sure that that doesn't happen again. And this unit is is, is, is part of the Department of Computer Science, and it's, it's supposed to link uh, between the health sector and provision of ICT solutions. And so far, we've had partners. We've been working on various projects. Uh, with the Minister of Health, uh, Botswana UPenn partnerships, Botswana Harvard partnerships, CHOP. The, we have done conferences, uh, health informatics conferences, and also we have uh, collaborated with USA. Next slide. It is important to, 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 before we talk about our projects, that we know that in Botswana at the moment, um, the move is towards digitization and uh, looking back and uh, um, since 19, this 2005, um, I'm sorry, uh, we've had an ICT uh, policy and that ICT was talking about digital transformation in research, science and technology. So um, uh, since that time now, it's, it's the right time for the country to look at, to look back at what the, they, they, they committed in the policy. So there's been a task a group called Smart Botswana, which is looking at um, how uh, far we have done. And one of the things that really we are looking at is digital transformation. So this particular project we feel like is well placed uh, because it's, it's talking about uh, open data and open science and also talking about research coordination. And Botswana is looking at um, uh, uh, towards a, a knowledge based economy. And we feel like this this project is very, very um, relevant. Um, we also have a national e-health strategy. I won't be too detailed on it. Um, it has some strategic objectives. Uh, for instance, it calls for national e-health platform to be established by 2023. It, it talks about availability of, of data and sharing, which should be strengthened by 2021. It's, it's already gone. Um, so it's, it's, it really was very ambitious. It, it was 2020 to 2024. So we feel like this is also very relevant to, to this particular project. Next slide. Um, we have a team. Uh, the team uh, is myself, uh, Dr. Gray, uh, who is the uh, co-principal investigator, and I'm the PI here. Um, he's with CHOP, and so, and then we have Kahiso co-investigator at the University of Botswana. We have a pro project coordinator called Badisa. Um, 
I will also have research assistants. Uh, we, the administrator is Botswana UPN Partnership. Uh, University of Botswana is very keen on supporting it. University of Pennsylvania is keen on supporting it. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia are supporting it. So the problem here that we are trying to look at has a, a grounding in a report that was uh, published in 2019 by UNICEF Botswana. Um, basically, what they're saying is, um, uh, which we also observed when we were engaging with uh, various partners, is that Botswana has invested heavily in, in healthcare information infrastructure. And therefore, there's been many, many systems and solutions that have been proposed. However, these systems have got a disparate, they're very disparate, and they don't easily integrate, uh, which is causing a, a serious uh, problems. Um, and also combining different data collection and reporting systems. And um, such that when you look at uh, um, uh, an output such as the one that you are looking at on the right hand side, they're looking at number of children under five affected by stunting or overweight uh, between 2002 and 2020. We really are not sure that because of all these problems, um, such statistics could be trusted. So we are now trying to look back at, at this and trying to solve it in another way. And this way, next slide, is that we want to reflect after this year's we want to revise the status quo in terms of the data that is going through the systems. And we want to try and see if we can apply the fair principles of data openness, findable, accessible, and interoperable, reusable, that is aligned to the strategy. And most importantly, develop a repository framework for data collection. Next slide. Uh, the study really wants to contribute to the understanding of the flow of the clinical information within the system. Uh, aim one is to understand how the, uh, the, the, the flow of data comes from frontline uh, clinician uh, to the Ministry of Health into the labs and back to that clinician. So we are very, very interested in that because we feel like uh, it's one of the things that will help us understand um, why, um, wh how, what is happening in all these disparate systems. And most importantly, to go along with that, the second aim is to examine the healthcare worker perceptions about the data collection. We feel that that, that is very, very important to understand how they are using the data and how they feel about the solutions that have been given to them. We particularly wanted to just use a smaller data set in order to focus and use child growth and malnutrition, HIV and TB testing. Um, we are looking for eventually to come up with flows. This is a typical information flow um, that would, would probably zoom into it. Uh, it becomes more complex as we are collecting our data to understand right from the patient and through the systems what is happening in terms of the data and the handling of the data. And ultimately, hopefully, the next slide is where we are, we are going to be able to identify from uh, at national level, regional level, district level, government level, and private you know, NGOs and, and clinics, how the data is flowing in terms of data, how, how we are doing, we are performing in terms of data collection, in terms of compilation, the storage, analysis, and reporting and news, especially for, de for decision making. So basically that is where our, our focus is, going through all this and coming up with a, an, over an overall uh, um, view that looks like this in the end. Next slide that uh, maybe Craig Gray would come in and talk about a bit of history um, uh, of, the, of the project. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Audrey. Um, I think that this is a, a really important um, to go through because I think it uh, brings up a number of points that are important whenever you're doing global health uh, of any sort, really, but especially projects in informatics. The um, first, uh, to understand, this project was initially going to be developing of an application that was going to then be implemented um, in Botswana for child health. However, as we started to look around the environment, we realized that, as Audrey pointed out, there are a number of systems already in place. There was also another group that was actually going to develop uh, a similar application. And so as we discussed, we realized that maybe it would be better to try to understand the environment that we were working in. And obviously this is always important, but in technology, it's really easy to just jump in and try to apply a solution or create a new tool that doesn't fit in the larger ecosystem and only ends up getting used once for that particular study and then get discarded. So after we decided um, that our project should be more data gathering and understanding of data flow and, and perception of technology, we applied for um, a global health pilot grant, which we were awarded. 
And then there was a lot to do with the IRB, both um, on the UB side um, as well as the Penn side. So as always, any of you who do research, I'm sure this will not be shocking, IRBs slow things down. Uh, there's good reason for that. They're incredibly important, but remember to build this into your planning and your timeline, especially when you're doing international collaborations, you often need multiple IRBs from multiple institutions that may or may not communicate particularly well. And so ensure that in your timeline and thought process, you understand that this may be a barrier. After IRBs, we needed um, additional research permits from multiple groups and organizations, both within the country um, as well as outside. Many um, of the people that we were interested in interviewing uh, are only comfortable and only agree to research as long as their bosses and their bosses' bosses support it, uh, agree, and um, clearly state that they can uh, participate in the research. And so in order to do that, there are lots of groups that had to be contacted, both by email, by phone, and continuously contacted, um, because oftentimes they would respond and then say, have, well, we can have a meeting, and then we wouldn't have the meeting. Um, and so it is a lot of legwork on the ground. And that kind of brings up the, the final point that I think is incredibly important. Up until uh, really April of this year, a whole lot of it was planning and waiting and planning and waiting. And the, the key from my point of view in terms of actually getting the project started um, and running forward was to identify research coordinators and assistants on the ground that live in the community and work in the communities that we're interested in. And again, I think this is the key to any sort of research project, but especially in global health and especially in informatics. I would even go so far as to say, um, although some people may disagree with me, but if you don't have local experts, champions, and coordinators that are really pushing your study forward, and instead there is someone from outside of the country that is um, leading your study, I think um, you should really uh, rethink and re-examine how you're approaching it. Uh, because I think in the long run, um, if it's not uh, supported um, and um, run by local experts, then, then I think the longevity, longevity of it uh, will suffer. So um, throughout this far in lessons learned, we already spoke about a couple of them as part of the history. Uh, this is the data collection space that we're working in. We are not trying to talk with all these facilities, but these could be any of the facilities um, that we're talking about. And so in order to collect um, the data, we have to start with community sensitization. And we haven't uh, even gotten to analysis yet. We are still, as Audrey mentioned, in the process. And sensitization um, I thought was an interesting process because it does take a whole lot of time. And as I was saying, all of these organizations, we had to reach out to them. We had to speak with them. We had to explain what we're doing, ensure that their leadership understood what we were doing and why, and agreed that it was important. Uh, at that point, we could go and you see one of these sessions here where we're speaking to some of the leadership and to some of the people we would be talking to about our project and ensuring that they understood our goals and what our deliverables were. And so then they could disseminate that information amongst the people um, that worked underneath them. So when we reached out to them, they would then be willing to, to speak to us. So these are just some of the data collection features that we're looking for. Um, just some understanding about data as well as the data flow that Audrey mentioned previously. This is just some of the, the focus and some of the more researchy parts of it, which I think are a little more standard um, and not quite as interesting as some of the way that it actually gets put into practice. And again, just uh, healthcare worker perceptions. We're using REDCap because it is a, a system that most people in the world at this point are familiar with, at least that do research. Um, it's you know relatively cheap and easy to set up your own instance and Botswana has been using REDCap for a long time. And these are just a couple pictures of um, some of our surveys. And I will pass it back to Audrey for the last part to talk about um, kind of the data we've captured so far and um, our challenges along the way. Thank you very much, Craig. Yes, um, 
we 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 have really tried to reach as much as possible as as, as Grace said. Uh, more than thirty facilities have been contacted. Um, and uh, we have had meetings with a number of facilities. Uh, very happy to have gone around the country. Eight hospitals uh, had meetings with them. Um, we also have district hospitals that are they are looking up. Usually there are smaller hospitals, and then there's one big hospital in in, in a dist per district, or maybe one or two. Uh, so the, we've been happy to to at least uh, reach out to three uh, centers of excellence as well. And, uh, and that has led us to, at this moment, uh, really uh, progressed with more than 200 uh, surveys done. Uh, we're still going on, and hopefully it will be more next time we report. And we also have, have done some interviews, and most of the, all of these are, were done um, uh, online um, with, with, by our research assistants. And that uh, did not go without uh, problems. Uh, we had so many uh, challenges. Uh, we had our, our, you know, IT equipment. Uh, we'd like to have online because there was uh, the project started when COVID uh, was still very much, especially the protocols were in place. We needed to be, to align to that. But um, in rural areas, IT equipment uh, is is a problem. Uh, and in most cases, the leaders, as as Grace said, if you if the leaders did not allow, then the 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 the, the people who are working for those leaders were finding it very difficult uh, to engage. Um, lack of internet uh, and also uh, permits. Just getting permits was a problem. That's why we took almost seven months to get permits. Um, and also, we realized that. Research seems to be foreign <laughs> when you are you are coming with other solutions uh, and you are talking about taking it from the research point of view. People um, they want quick answers and they don't want you to start investigating because they feel like you're you're wasting time or something. So there's not a good reception in terms of uh, coming in as a researcher. Next slide, please. Yeah. Yes, and part participants also. Um, being uh, in the healthcare fraternity, they were always running around. You start a, an interview and halfway through a call comes in, they have to go and so forth. There are so many, so many such problems. Um, and, and the technology that we are using also we're having a, we're having a problem. Uh, and other people felt that uh, the study was, was it not, uh, you know, was it not going to address the same things? I think that is what people said. But we needed to be very focused and 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 careful and and explain why this one is necessary. Because half of the time, uh, these solutions were not really bought through, uh, put put uh, in place through research. They were actually just, uh, I would say, boardroom decisions that were made by on behalf of the people. So this time we have made. We've tried to do an, a community approach to try and understand the community before we bring a solution to them. Next slide. And uh, beyond this, really, we feel like um, this 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 is going to open up to research. Uh, we're going to be looking as part of our reporting. In the end, we might it might bring out certain things, including healthcare standards and uh, warehousing, different ways of putting to get together data, issues of interoperability, issues of fair data analysis and so forth. We build, we feel that uh, there'll be quite a lot of spin-offs, uh, spin-off projects or spin-off tasks that are that will come out of this project. Next slide. And uh, most importantly, beyond this, we'd like to work with more people. We bring in those entities that are relevant, uh, those that are dealing with children's data, such as the Baylor Clinic. We also would like to bring University of Oslo, who are at the center of uh, developing the systems uh, or providing rather the systems that are, are used in the, in, the, in the health sector here. I would like to, to, to get to know how we can work together to try and come up with better solutions uh, in, in, in the future and what research is going to come out of in terms of recommendation and how the project will, will be published and, and disseminated such that eventually uh, we work with government and, and, and come up with uh, 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 collaborative solutions that will help uh, uh, the country to move forward. I think with that really, um, that's the end. Uh, we really uh, uh, rely and believe in collaboration going forward. And that is where the project will now take off towards. Thank you very much for that.